So on a live stream on Tuesday, this guy, Professor Elliot Jacobson, said in a comment that this guy, Roger Hallam, is the opposite of a doomer. Somebody had, he knows had uh, referred to, to Hallam as a doomer, but uh, Elliot thinks he's rather an anti-doomer, or the opposite of a doomer. Um, just matter of factly, uh, not to denigrate Hallam uh, or you know be nasty to him, but um, just a descriptive uh, name for where he stands in the conversation about climate. And I thought that was an interesting um, intro to what I want to talk about, which is uh, climate narrative and its discontents. So let's look at this uh, first slide. So basically you have the climate narrative is the uh, carbon atom, the central atom on uh, this uh, CO2 style molecule. And central for the uh, climate narrative that was uh, conceived in the 1970s, about 1972, Stockholm conference, whatever, somewhere around there. So central to that is, you know, what we've all heard about uh, CO2, climate change, global warming, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you have a problem that is urgent. Uh, you have urgency. Uh, and you also have able people humanity with the agency which is able to do something about it so basically the the if you boil down the official climate narrative which i'm not saying it's right or wrong but but just you know to boil it down to its uh, core compartments uh, it consists of a belief that the climate situation is urgent, there is an urgent problem nature of it, uh, and the agency, which is that we can do something, humanity, corporations, governments, whatever, can do something to rectify the problem, as they say. So, uh, but like the molecule, you have two connections to, to this guy on the left and to this guy on the right. And uh, this is uh, drawn by AI uh, and uh, the AI can't spell or it kind of invents some spelling errors that went there in the prompt. You know, so it's, and it's not my fault. It's something the, the AI wanted to insert. So take it for what it is. If you want to take it as an insult that uh, the climate skeptics uh, are unable to spell, do that if you want. But this was something that just came out of the AI. So basically you have uh, a bunch of people here uh, who believe we have agency, humans can do lots of things. We are sort of capable, industrious, we can do all kinds of stuff. But it does, it's, there's no plus urgency here. So, so they, these guys call them the climate skeptics. Some people use the nasty word and call them the deniers, climate deniers. I don't agree that they deny the existence of the climate. But, uh, but basically, they don't believe it's an urgent thing. They don't believe it's uh, an urgency situation that is so uh, serious that we have to do anything. Um, yet on the other side here, you have the urgent guys uh, who, who have a lack of the agency belief. So these people believe that the problem uh, is urgent. It is or was um, a serious problem. They no longer believe that uh, we can do some anything about it. So this is basically the doomer uh, atom right here. Um, and 
these guys who are doomers, they may have been a lifelong, long time uh, climate activists, but you know, if we, if, we, if we collectively left it too late, at some point uh, we, are, we have crossed some tipping points and stuff, and, uh, and we are now on a road to nowhere, or we are um, uh, beyond the point of no return. So while the problem is still a big one, a major one, uh, there's nothing we can do, so, so the agency thing isn't there. But I just thought that was an interesting way to, to sort of uh, to model or communicate the, the whole sort of climate um, discussion or conversation. That, uh, there's, this, there's a shrinking, diminishing uh, number of people who believe in the climate narrative. People no longer take what uh, talking heads say on TV as gospel or truth, uh, and these guys will just have to uh, do a better job or convince us uh, better, or maybe show us their data and show us their uh, thinking uh, and proof, prove to us that uh, that we can still do something and, and that it's. Uh, uh, an urgent thing, um, yeah, basically, descriptively. Um, so to over to what Elliot said about Roger. Uh, he said that Hallam was not a doomer, so he's, he's not in this uh, in this atom. Uh, rather, quite obviously, Hallam is in the blue ball climate narrative uh, department because he he believes uh, it's an urgent thing he says that every day every single day and he also obviously believes or at least uh, pretends to believe that he can do something because he and his guys <coughs> glue themselves to the motorway every single day every week on every continent so uh, I don't know. Um, we can't really know what people feel inside of themselves, uh, but uh, at least it comes across as a, a bunch of guys who uh, who believe in doing something, uh, throwing tomato soup on uh, paintings or gluing yourselves to the M25, um, risking your life. Uh, yeah, I've talked about that. Before and I'm not a not a fan of uh, getting grandmothers to risk their life uh, on the motorway. Uh, at least not if uh, if there's no obvious positive outcome of that action. You know, uh, yeah, it can be argued that uh, that we can't even if we got. Uh, a 100% majority in every election all over the world would we be able to do anything, right? So that's kind of the discussion there. But um, it's inter interesting because even though sort of you had deniers or skeptics uh, first, I mean like since the 80s, and you now recently uh, got, you know, I think it's like 40, 50, 60 percent of the young kids kids today, they don't think we can do anything about it. Uh, so they're in the urgency but no agency uh, category. Um, it's, it's still, it still it doesn't stop there because uh, you also have a, another um, segment or another group of people, which I actually believe Elliot uh, Jacobson Professor Elliot Jacobson is a part of and that is the uh, the pro collapse people or the trans doomers uh, as I would call it uh, people who look beyond the doom and into the post civilized post industrial future and look at uh, that in a positive way so 
they are over here, they are kind of uh, stoics. Uh, Stoicity is their uh, campaign slogan, and uh, they are kind of the come what may kind of people. Um, and uh, yeah, more optimistic in a way because uh, nothing, nothing uh, bad is without uh, a silver lining, a kind of positive uh, opening to it. Uh, it seems so. What has happened between uh, the urgency ball and? And this category, this molecule, is that, let's say that they started by believing the climate narrative, right? They, they thought the politicians were not lying, politicians uh, wanted to do something when they said they wanted to do something, uh, and, uh, and uh, that the problem was, was a big one, and then they transitioned over to yeah it's still a big fucking problem but you know we haven't done anything for the past 40 years so it's a big problem but we can't do anything uh, and after a while I think in this category um, yeah your, your mileage may differ and people ha are clearly different in the way they think and uh, progress in, in these things, but I, I think that happened, I think, to both uh, Elliot and myself, is that we go from thinking uh, everything is doomed and uh, this world is uh, falling apart at the seams, into thinking, okay, so the this civilization, this industrial civilization, is going to crumble and come to a grinding halt. Uh, but is that really so bad, right? That's kind of the, the new thought that we are going to to get to sooner or later, and then you you will find yourself over in the historicity department. It's just a happy place. We have cookies. Um, where you're thinking, okay, so the um, the owls, the frogs, the reindeer, the uh, polar bears or whatever, you know, salamanders, all of these creatures that you love or hate. I think I think all children just love animals uh, in general, you know, and flowers and trees, forests, and to all of these other guys, these other persons, as uh, Derek Johnson calls them, they face a very smiling, uh, positive, optimistic uh, future as the factories and motorways and uh, high-rise buildings crumble and uh, give way to weeds and uh, flocks of birds building nests in the uh, in the houses and uh, yeah maybe a slightly lower human population let's not rule that out and uh, basically the uh, the entire apparatus that uh, keeps human life possible even a thousand years after an industrial collapse is exactly uh, the living biosphere and the plants and animals and fungi, uh, the things you can pick or hunt or fish. Those guys are going to come back in great style and uh, take this thing further, you know, because uh, we're not going to give up the spirit just because uh, one specific regime of human life that is that has only been going for like two three hundred years in the industrial civilization we're not going to give up the spirit spirit just because that collapses uh, no this is a long-term project this life thing that we've been doing for three four 
billion years uh, on this planet, and um, so we're more like in the in the stoicity department. Um, we try to laugh, we try to smile, we try to have some black humor, some gallows humor. Uh, we try to have sort of a queer uh, view <coughs> on current events. You know, like. Oh yeah, so this is happening. Oh, okay, so they're doing that. Yeah, uh, big deal, <laughs> big deal in the larger scheme of things, right? Uh, irony, sarcasm. Yeah, we're really bad guys when it comes to laughing at stuff. Um, okay, so that's uh, kind of my presentation. Just wanted to tell you that there's some there's life outside of the climate narrative. Uh, and uh, yeah, basically one of the other transition tools from, from urgency ball to stoicity guy is that um, uh, Oh, I just lost it. What was that? I'll have to get back to that later. Okay. Thank you. Bye.